Ass to elbows. I'm back with. <coughs> I'm joking, actually. Stupid. Yes, I'm back with Q here, uh, talking about the episode three through five of Little Brother. Three whole episodes to talk about before we get into some of the bigger details and a lot of this last episode on Saturday night. How are you feeling about the last three episodes? Uh, interesting shit. Good shit. Good editing. Thank Exciting you. stuff. I actually do not watch Big Brother, but am thoroughly enjoying Little Brother. Also, I am very stuffy, so if I sound like I'm talking like this, it's because I am. She's here to get me sick. Probably. Yep. Well, you get, you got me sick first, but oh, whatever. I, I, I wasn't sick. Okay. I had allergies. Okay. Uh, we are going to start with... Basically, I wanted to ask the question to you. Yep. You've watched the last three episodes. Uh, what alliances? There's so many going on. Everybody's trying to make alliances with everybody. But what alliances are standing out to you most? Not necessarily that you think they're real, but I guess that's what I'm asking. Um, I would say the matriarchy standing out, probably just because it has a name. And then along those lines, Dazed and Busters, although I couldn't even tell you who's in that alliance. I just remember the name <laughs> You don't it. know who's in it? It's Mag and Daze, who's Mike. the third person. Ugh. Uh, I liked the fan guy Leanna Meg situation, but I guess after these, you know, three episodes, that's probably a bust. No other alliances stand out. No, all these shits are so fake and flu. I mean, there's the alliance of Dot and Meg, right? Well, yeah, well, well, Dot's gone now, but we'll get to that. I was going to ask, basically, do you have any thoughts on the, the veto competition? You know, Mike smartly throwing the veto to Fanguy in hopes that Fanguy would uh, save him. And then Fanguy, you know, he told Leanna he wouldn't use it, but then told Mike he might use it on Mike. And then in the end, he ends up using it on Mike. Thoughts about that whole situation with the veto? Thought it was well played on Mike's end. He guaranteed himself that he'd be pulled down. I think Fanguy is someone that likes to let on that he's true to his word and that he's a trustworthy player. He's not. Ask Treasure. Um, so I thought that that was a good move on Mike's part to, you know, basically trust that Fang Guy would pull him down. So, no qualms there on Mike's end. However, the whole Fang Guy, you know, playing the veto, but telling Lana he won't play the veto, I appreciate the fact that his feet were held to the fire, by Deleon because it didn't it didn't make sense. I feel like Fangai wasn't in a bad position in this game and by playing the veto all he did was make an enemy of someone, you know? True. I would have respected more if Fangai had just been transparent with Leanna and said, you know, oh, you know, information is everything to me in this game. He said that several times. I need to know who is coming after me. And if your, answer, if your answer is not satisfactory, I'm going to play the veto. I would have respected him more if he had said it like that, because I feel like Leanna is a pretty cut-and-dry player, and I don't think she would necessarily take it personally. Like, I don't think she's mad about the fact that Fangai played the veto. I think it's just consistent with what she expected of him. Um, overall, I just feel like Fangai kind of overplayed his hand. I guess he made an ally in Mike, but I think that he could have made an ally in Mike by throwing the challenge and not being involved at all and saying, if you come back, I'll work with you. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm not happy So, you don't think Fangai was at the bottom like he thought he no. was? No. Fangai is paranoid. At this, He's early in this game. big dazed energy. You hate to see it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Maybe they've switched roles because Daze is so Daze chill is... right now. Daze, Daze is chill as fuck right now. You don't think so? Daze sits back, eats a little dinner... Throws Nick under the bus and goes back to eating dinner. I feel like we're just less privy to Daze's inner monologue. But chill? Well, you know, it's, it's fair to say Van Guy should have asked Leanna because, you know, they did have that conversation and Leanna did not give him a lot of information. But, you know, Leanna's HOH, I feel like Leanna was like holding her cards way too close to her chest like she was getting everybody else information mm -hmm. but she didn't want to give anybody else information and then that kind of made her HOH sloppy coming with this veto. Yeah, Leanna started off this HOH very strong and did it very sloppily 
it's like she built up all of this currency through the form of information, but then didn't want to share it. And it's like, well, then what good is information if you're just going to harbor it, right? Yeah. So uh, I thought that the way that she handled Fangai's situation, very sloppy. Honestly, would have respected her more if she would have, if she wasn't going to share information, if she was going to say, well, you know what, Fangai, you're my ally. You should trust me. Aren't we, aren't we allies? Like, she could have flipped it back on him and gaslit him at minimum. But for her to be like, oh, you know, oh, you know, because her fucking audio is so loud. How is Leanna the only one with a fucking 4K mic? I don't even know if that's what 4K means. But her <laughs> mic this video, but... is so loud. Give her mic, give the decibels in her mic to Delion. Because this <laughs> this one seems like it's talking like this half the time. <sighs> Jesus. Uh... Anyways, but sorry, I got off track. Um... I would have, like, had more respect if she had gaslit Fangai versus how she actually played it, which is just like, oh, well, you know, who did she tell him, like, Delion's after you or something, or... Well, she said that Delion's not after him. He was asking yeah, for information. Right, right, right. She didn't... Because the first time Leanna told Fangai that there was a lot of people saying his name. So that's why I think made Fangai paranoid in the first yeah, place. that's So true. then Fangai okay, okay. is asking Leanna information about who is saying his name, and then saying, well, not a whole lot of people are saying your name. It's not Delian who you think it is. Not the best information given to Fangai. No, I... Okay, so then maybe I'll take back my initial comment that Fangai was in a better place, because I forgot that she had shared that bit of information. Although, not that many people were saying Fangai's name, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I mean, it was edited, so I'm sure there was more names thrown out, but I really don't feel like that many people said Fangai. I don't think Fangai was not the round one target for sure. So then, Lana puts a dot against Alex, thinking Dot's gonna stay. Wow, that was so fucking dumb. I mean, good TV, ten out of ten. Dot calling people's mamas hoes. I call <laughs> people's mamas hoes now because of Dot. Wow, Dot inspired you. Yes, or something? I will call a bitch mama a hoe. No questions asked. I'm like, your mama's a hoe. She low down and she raggedy. Just be all because of Dot. Um, good TV. Enjoyed it. Uh, really loved Dot's reaction to it. But if the goal of that was to... First of all, Leanna kept saying, I just don't want two people to be mad at me. Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop, because it sounds like I'm doing a black set. You know, it sounds like I'm, like, doing a caricature of someone. I'm a black woman when I'm trying to do a caricature of a New Orleans accent. <laughs> that is loud as shit. <laughs> Sorry. Back to it. <laughs> the point is, is Leanna's whole thing was she didn't want to leave with two enemies. But you gotta inform the person that you're gonna put up, listen, I'll, first you have to make sure they're actually gonna fucking be safe. And second, you have to tell them the plan. So that way they're not completely blindsided. Because if I'm Dot, oh, you've definitely made an enemy out of me. So like her whole, if anything, I felt like she left this chat with three enemies. Which we saw in episode five that she did. She left it with Alex, Mike, and Dot, who we now know could potentially come back. But I personally think her best move would have been to put up a member from the matriarchy. But, like, for her, she was not in on that plan about they don't have the numbers so you can't put a woman up, which is probably why she didn't want to put a woman up because didn't, she didn't think they had the numbers. How not? You would have had... Okay. I mean, it depends who you're putting I guess up. you can't vote for yourself, huh? No. Okay, well, she would have had two votes from the women. Three, maybe, depending on who's up because we know someone on the matriarch is a little flip-floppy. Let's say she puts Meg up, which I genuinely think Meg would have been the best call here if she was trying to go purely for I don't want to make another enemy and I want to make sure I send the original nominee home. Put Meg up. Basically, I think Aspen will be loyal to her many alliances. I think she'll be loyal to the matriarchy. It'll be Monet, D, and Aspen. Fan guy. Dot. Five. Okay, and then you can put a, put a random six. Nav. And she could have broken the tie. Yeah. So, Dot was just not like it just really goes to show show that maybe she doesn't have her hand on the pulse of this game as well as I thought because like if you thought that a dot Alex nomination was going to be unanimous 
Yeah, and it also goes back to her, I think, just not giving some people enough information, because I think that... Right. Like you're saying, she needed to tell Dot he was getting put right. up. Maybe right. she could have had a conversation with the matriarchy about who the backup plan should be instead of her keeping that information to herself the whole time. Right. But I think that that also goes to show that none of these alliances are real. And I think the downside of making so many alliances is that... You don't feel comfortable sharing freely because you know you've got your hand in 17 different pots and you can't actually trust anyone in this fucking game. True. Hold on, I gotta fucking... If this is me next week, she got me sick. Action. Alright, that it is the first HOH though, so Leanna being the first HOH is kind of a tough predicament. But uh, next up was the argument between Dot and Fanguy. Fanguy calling Dot out on some of his words and Dot throwing it back at Fanguy. Any thoughts on that? Well played by Fanguy. Why so? Um, well, first of all, I don't actually know how these nominations work in like real Big Brother world. Like, I don't know if a nom gets put, put up and they're, you know, out of respect given that time to plead their case. And Not at that point in the game. No. What do you mean? Like, in the real Big Brother, like, you get, right before the vote, you get to say a case. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Which is stupid, because people have already made their decision, and the yeah. house has already talked, so. Um, but, you know, throwing that may or maybe not tradition out of the window, um, I thought it was well played on Fan Guy's part, because... First of all, I told you, hoes, I've been telling you guys since my first season, Dot, his, he's not loyal, okay? We knew he wasn't loyal when he backstabbed Ori and Alex. To put it in previous Q's terminology, Meg's loyalties extend beyond her current teams, but Dot's don't. And that just goes to show that this hoe is not loyal. And I'm glad that people are finally fucking seeing it. If you had listened to a black woman, you would have saw it after the first season, and you wouldn't trust him for two other, subs three other subsequent games. But I'm glad you finally got on board and realized that Dot is not a loyal hoe. He plays just as messy of a game as Alex. He's just less strategic about it. But I think, you know, now he's getting there. But try to tell you hoes. Try to tell you. You told me uh, after episode four that you take credit for Dot and Alex not being being able to work together. Yes, yes, that is that seed that I planted <sighs> that jur that uh, that night after I lost a challenge to Patty. Uh, just as hell, you were yes, just as hell. Yes, uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of the fakery. We're at the merge. I'll go sit my ass on the jury. And uh, let's go ahead and plant some... Let's go ahead and really drive home this very obvious crack. This fraction. And it's lived down for two games. Fracture. <laughs> and, yeah. Here it is. Alive and well. You love to see it. Speaking of Alex, though, he's the other nominee here, and he has to pitch his own case. He's pitching, you know, kind of similar to his first season. And he's doing a good job of it, of saying, you know, I'm going to be, like, a, a nominee shield. all the time. I'm yeah. going to be the pawn in this game. Yeah. What were your thoughts on Alex being on the block against that? Yeah, I thought he, he knew his cell, and he did it well, and it worked. It worked very well. And I think, unlike Dot, Dot just didn't have... Like, what, what does Dot offer? He's charismatic, he's funny, he's friendly, and he's untrustworthy, so he can and and he's also not like a major comp threat like we would consider an Alex or a Mike, so he can't even really paint. Well, himself. in Survival Three, which you haven't seen, he did become kind of a comp threat. Fair enough. Well, then if that's the case, then he should have fucking said, "Listen, I'm just like Alex. I too can be." Then steal Alex's whole bit and say, "Same thing. I'm a meat shield too." The point is, is Alex knew his position and played it well, and the same cannot be said to Dot. And then Dot let his emotions get out of hand, was telling people to shut the fuck up. 
Where do you think Dot went wrong, other than the obvious of not pitching to Days and trying to apologize to Fan Guy and that entire chat? Well, yeah, that was that was a major wrong. I think he went wrong, honestly, from how he played it in the first few chats, which is not necessarily his fault. Basically, Dot kind of went into this game like, oh, I'm trying to play more independent, and was almost kind of like Treasure in the sense that he was very non-committal with alliances, and when it comes down to it of like, I need to know, are we working together or not? Someone like Aspen couldn't be sure of that. However, I don't think that that's his fault, because I do feel like players should be allowed to evolve and grow and recognize the mistakes that they've made in previous games and rectify those mistakes. And so I think that by him not trying to jump into 50 million alliances like everybody else, that's great, but no one wanted to show him the grace of allowing him to play a different game. You know? Yeah, true. And then, you know, Aspen might be playing a more spicy game with Chill. her game this season. <laughs> but she did find herself in the middle of this vote. Yeah. I Still, guess that's true. It yeah. was it was Asmin and Days that were the swing votes in this vote. And I know you don't seem to want to give Days credit. But Days in this first round was uh playing a damn good first round. He got the ball rolling on the, <coughs> He got the ball rolling on the whole Nick stuff, blowing it out of proportion, playing a dealy on type game. Well you stole my fucking joke, <laughs> you ho. How are you gonna steal my joke that I told you before? That's not a joke. You're gonna. That was my observation that you stole. But continue. <laughs> Days is playing a good game, putting that target on Nick, and then he finds himself in the middle of the vote too. Yeah, it was very much uh, online isolation, Deleon energy. What was it? Somebody called Brooklyn a bitch or something like that. Kelsey as yes, a bitch, Leo. Yes, all even though it was in jest, are the same, and it just carried like the wind. And, yeah, it was well played on Days' part. Although, I have to... Yes, maybe I don't like to give Days credit. I don't know. Maybe this is a Days Tate account. I'm feeling like it's because uh, Days and Alex during a podcast about your seasons didn't give you a lot of credit, and I feel like you don't want to give them a lot of credit. In That's season. true. They hate to give black women credit. Um, I question if Days spreading this information was as intentional as Deleon. Like, Deleon was like, oh. Who else I guess. Any final thoughts on Dot getting the boot, even though he does have a shot and a battle back? Uh, unfortunate. Just an unfortunate way to see him go, but, oh well. The game goes on. We'll miss him much. Well, we have a new HOH competition here about social media and who has the most followers. A game idea you put in my head about Child, a competition that you don't even remember. That game would have ate me up. And, and okay. you're the one that came up with this idea. That I thought it was Taylor Swift. You mean who the fuck is following Ariana Grande she has a huge and J Lo? Does J Lo even tweet like that? Like what the fuck interesting or funny does this hoe have to say? Don't ask me. You even ask me to agree on that. And Subway over yeah, Taco Bell? That was a trick question. The KFC trash. I can understand. Taco Bell, all of them are trash, but Subway Taco after Jared? <laughs> Their Jared. PR recovered? It's better than diarrhea from Taco Bell. Fair enough. Too shit. Too shit. But we get to a point at the end where Delion and Fan Guy <laughs> basically agree to throw it to Mike, and Mike makes a deal with him. He won't put it up. Thoughts on this competition and that, even though Fanguy and Delian miss out on the opportunity to have a power if one of them would have got second place, but... Yeah, uh, again, well played by Mike. He knows when to spot a good time to throw a competition. Also wild that we're already, or rather we're only two challenges in and people are just throwing shits left and right. It's the big brother way, unfortunately. Uh, but very well played by Mike. Really like that. Not well played by Fang and Delian, or I mean, it keeps him safe, I guess. Delian especially, Fang. Yeah, well played. Well, see, I guess that's like an offer you can't refuse, right? I guess I'm not. I'm not saying, oh, well played, Fang guy, and well played, Delian, because they didn't make the suggestion of like, hey, Mike, if I throw it, will you give it to me? So like, that's why I'm saying the credit goes to Mike here. Yeah. But 
I mean, yeah, Deleon benefits. Good for him. And with the uh, with the power, beforehand, I always thought to myself, if there was a tie, I would just go into the next round. But I'm kind of wishing I would have came up with an idea Survivor did at one point where, like, two people have to share a power and they have to agree to use the power. Because I think Fangai and Deleon having to do that with the power might have been entertaining. Oh, uh, good. But I didn't think about that till way after. Take notes, future viewers, people <laughs> that want to play games. Yes. Um, Monet, though, has two powers. I know, she racking them hoes up. She better not fuck around and be like old girl, though, uh, from the last season where Mary Ann won, where she went home with two, oh, two yeah. powers in her True. pocket. It don't mean shit if you go home with powers in your pocket. So, yep. I'll be more impressed to see how Monet leverages these powers, but good for her. Although... Interesting that more people aren't volunteering to be not the HOH because I feel like it was made clear with Days nominating himself that there's a potential power at play. And I'm surprised that just hasn't come back up for discussion. Yeah, I don't feel like anybody really caught on to that, though. Like, Fan Guy said that in the first vote, but nobody's really yeah, yeah. questioned Days about if anything else happened. Maybe Days is chill. Maybe. There you go. I threw you about Days. You happy? <laughs> <laughs> Dazed is uh, thinking about talking to Monet because he knows she has a power because... Yeah. That's well played. Yeah. Now the matriarchy is trying to figure out the votes because if there was four votes then, and there's four matriarchy members then and Nick voted against Alex then the votes aren't adding up and Aspen's telling Lies. May one thing and then telling Dee Dee another thoughts on this whole situation. I don't like it. I don't like... Has no one learned from Alex? I mean, you see what position he's in for being a lying ass hoe. Same for Dot. Aspen's playing a very messy game. and She's gonna have to do a lot of damage control. And she was so worried about not revealing herself to Dee that she's now got Meg kind of like, what the fuck? Uh, so... Aspen, yeah, she's gonna have to answer for some of her decisions. And honestly, I don't understand what would have been... Like, refresh my memory. Did the matriarchy... Matriarchy. Did they agree that they were all gonna collectively vote Alex? Yeah, Leanna asked them to all vote out Alex because she wanted Alex gone in hopes that Dot would not target her, but Alex might. And they all seemed to agree to it, but then Aspen said she wants to be with the matriarchy, but she also wants to play her own game. But now she finds herself in a mess. Okay, so if I'm Aspen, just do damage control to one person. Go to Leanna, say, yeah, I ended up voting for Dot because I honestly thought that Alex had the numbers to go. I had made, some, you know, tell her you made a deal with Dot or, you know, tell her, pull, pull some shit out of your ass. But, like, it would have been easier to be honest with one person and have them coming after you versus lying. And now having all like, because then didn't Mike reveal that Mike is also confused because he's now been privy to yeah, two different answers. Well, she didn't tell Mike two different answers, but Meg told Mike about. The well, two there answers. you go. Meg's all right. She's on her days slash Deleon shit. She's spreading <laughs> stuff around. Like it's just gonna be really messy for Aspen. Maybe want to tone it down in terms of the messiness. Maybe. Like, you know, maybe Aspen being silent all of these seasons was for her own benefit. Because when she talks, she puts herself in, puts herself in positions that she doesn't have to be in. But she's hella entertaining, though. It's gonna be entertaining when she starts getting her ass ate over all these <laughs> lies she can tell her. You keep using this term, ass ate. And okay. you want to explain that? Because it, yes. it sounds like a good thing. Ass eating is going to go viral. And... I am going to be the credit of it because I use ass. I use it in the in my real life this way. Basically, one day I was talking to my coworkers and I was telling them about how I was gonna get in trouble with my boss, and I couldn't remember if it was get chewed out or ate out. And then I was like, wait, what's the difference? What's the difference between getting your ass chewed out and your ass ate out? And so I think I elected on ate out. And then I was like, oh, well, that's just funny as shit. So anyways, Aspen gonna get that ass ate. And she's not gonna enjoy it. It's not gonna be enjoyable. <laughs> uh, well, let's circle back to Mike being the HOH. 
Uh, how do you think he's doing his HOH? Also kind of getting a little messy, but it's kind of the HOH way to try and set your own game up well. Yeah. But is he overdoing it? Mike? I don't have any comments on whether or not he's overdoing it or underdoing it, but I think that he has set himself up very well with the decisions that he's made with telling Fanguy, I'll throw it if you take me off the block, telling Deleon and Fanguy again, I will put you up if you know, Mike has made some solid decisions now. So, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Only thing is... Oh, and actually, something else that I liked about Mike's gameplay this round is that he made his targets very clear, and he made it... He, like, you know, did the damage control preemptively. Like, he told Nick, listen, you're a rat. Although Nick was on to them. Nick was like, hold up. All of the winners seem to be mad. I'm not in those chats. Yeah. Kudos to you, Nick. And, you know, Nick also peeped the fact that they were twisting his words. Nick's more savvy than he gets credit for. He's just an awkward social player. <laughs> he he was so awkward because when it came down to the... He was like, well, define a rat now because, <laughs> you know, I would say, like, maybe marsupial. <laughs> but rat? Who, me? I, who said that? Yeah. I ain't no rat. Uh, so he did... Uh, Mike did uh, take his lunch money, as Days would say. Um, so, but also, I think Mike handled that very nicely, and that I don't think Nick will super hold it against him that, you know, he's up because it's just like, oh, well, you know, information leaked, you leaked it. And then with Leanna, I mean, she knew what was coming, and she's not playing scared. And really like how Leanna was thinking. If she has the four votes of the matriarchy, they all have to vote together, though. But. Yeah. Well, she has three. We, we just don't know about Aspen's old mouthy ass. But, yeah, I, I, I think it was well played by Mike. But you're right. You pointed out correctly. Like It was the weakness to Leanna's HOH of not being open about her targets to mm -hmm. everyone and the reasoning as to why. And I think exactly. did, Mike did a good job about that. He did. Um, some of his, though, he was making a lot of different alliances because he has the whole DD Aspen thing, and they also pulled in Meg, and then he also has Days and Busters, and then he has some kind of thing with Monet, and then the game bot alliance, I'm going to call it, of Mike, Nav, and Alex. Although Nav well, has a social game. Mike and Alex, we'll see. I got to the point, I don't even be writing down when these hoes make alliances. I'm like, we'll, we'll just see when it comes time to vote where the numbers lie. None of you hoes are aligned. Next. And none of those stand out to you? No! No, they don't. Also, the only alliance that stands true to me, going back to the question you asked earlier, like which actual alliances might potentially be real, are the Mike Fangai Final 4 and 3 alliance. Like, that one I actually do think is just mutually beneficial for both of them. They can be meat shields for each other. Something that I find interesting, though, is that for some reason, Mike and Fangai- Well, no, not for some reason. It's because Fangai pulled Mike off the block. They're just like, oh yeah, you know, people are gonna assume that we're working together. So I guess their their option is to just lead into it. Because Fangai- or not Fangai, excuse me. Because Mike literally was like, okay, Monet, Dillion, Whoever else was in there, get the fuck out. I want to have a one-on-one -on -one with <laughs> Which he, to his credit, it was like a real age of where he didn't want to kick him out right away, so he let it keep going, but it kind of came to a point where he Ciao. was running out of time. Alright, future Big Brother players, let me tell you how you play that shit. Mike has host host, uh, host capability. Mm. Kick their asses out. But, oh, her, her Wi-Fi must have dropped. Well, I mean, he has to tell me to do it. That was the problem during the game. He, he can't chat it. you? I mean, it, publicly, yeah. Honestly, just be like, all right, we, we've had enough. Enough. Get out of here. <laughs> enough. Mike's trying to work on his social game. I get Okay, fair enough. Because me, I would have been like, oh, her Wi-Fi must be. Just how Aspen pulled that carry K, she went. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't in here. I'm not. I don't know. Who's Aspen? Um, do you have any, you talked about this already, but any thoughts more on the Mike Nick confrontation? Nick did not handle that well. Poor thing. And then he already kind of has a tendency to uh, stumble over his words anyways, which makes him seem shiftier than he actually is. <sighs> you hate to see it. 
How do you feel about the nominations, though, of Leon and Nick for Mike specifically? Does it benefit? Because Nick says it benefits Alex's game more than it benefits Mike's. Do you agree? Nick, Al has, Nick has made it clear that he's kind of been targeting Alex. Yeah, that's true. But Alex is all in on this. You called it game bot? Yeah. Alex is all in on this game bot alliance. And we've seen now that, you know, when Alex picks a person or two to be loyal to, he's gonna fucking lie and scheme and do all the things that he does. But when it comes down to it, he still won't vote them. So, uh, I think he could still ultimately benefit Mike's game because it could just be seen as a sacrifice to Alex. Of like, look, I took out the biggest person that's really throwing your name around. Yeah. So, of course, Nick is not privy to that. But still, I think that this benefits Mike. Although, <clears throat> I think that the Nick nomination benefits Mike. But I don't know that the Leanna nomination does. Why not? I mean, it's kind of like a tit for tat. It's an easy way out. It's a tit for tat. It's an easy way out, yes. But Leanna going home doesn't help his game any. And I think, I don't know, I just, like, Leanna to me is one of the neutral players that he calls it. And so, mm, yeah. Do you think he could have gotten some, like, good graces by not nominating her and trying to, like, I wanna fix say, things? Maybe? I want to say yes, but then Leanna is also a bit of a wild card. And I don't know that, you know, these grand gestures of loyalty mean much to her, so it's hard to say. Too sure. We should have done this at the beginning, because I know you like this, but uh, who went up and down for you from the first week, I guess? From episode one and two to episode five, who went up and down? Well, how about this? Instead of saying who went up, who went down, how about I just say a baseline for each player, how they're doing respective to their baseline? Okay. Uh, we'll start with Leanna. Oh, she's down bad. <laughs> she did this to herself. Monet. Monet is at her baseline. Even with two powers? Yes, because it's not about having powers, it's how you use them. And also, if she does have this chat with Days, this pending chat... <laughs> you don't think it's gonna be good for her? No. How about Didi? Baseline. You know, you did tell me, though, off-camera, that you felt like Didi was doing the best at like kind of like Dee Dee is working with her alliances. Yes, Dee Dee has ninety seven alliances. Not that she's initiated them, but Dee Dee's just like, yeah, sure, fuck it, I don't care. And she does well at balancing them how and like somehow and figuring out how they each benefit her. So Dee Dee's doing well. Maybe I'll actually put her up up from baseline. How but I thought that she did well in the first episode as well. <clears throat> Go ahead. How about Meg? Meg's doing well. Why? Oh, I don't want to give like explanations because then I'm gonna have to give these people compliments. <laughs> well, now's the time. <laughs> no, 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 for real. Uh, Meg's doing great at playing under the radar. How about Aspen? Down bad. Why? Stop lying. <laughs> Stop being a lying asshole. I really can't stand when people tell unnecessary lies. It's just giving Alex energy. Yeah, I don't understand why she, in that chat with Meg and Nick, she told them both that she voted for Dot. That was definitely her problem. Like, if she, she would have just lied the whole time, maybe she could have got away with it, but why she told those two the truth, Yeah, I don't understand. A question that I actually had was, will you ever confirm or deny if an advance has just been played? Uh, well, with the secret veto, it has to be confirmed, because the secret veto, you have to use it at a veto meeting. They just don't know the veto about the veto beforehand, but a secret switch your vote? No. It's a secret switch your vote. So. I would have been like, somebody switched my vote. I guess Lie. Maybe, maybe they don't think there's a secret switch your vote in this game, though, but... but no, I would have been like, there had to have been a power or something, because I promise on everything that I voted for. Bloop. There sure. you go. Like, just... Either be honest with Leanna and do the damage control that way and find a reasonable excuse, or just be like, yeah, there was uh, there's a switch vote. I'm telling you, dude, go back to Dazed or all these hoes that keep winning HOH. They must have powers or something. I don't know. How about Deleon? Deleon could really make it to the end if he just didn't talk. <laughs> That's what he's doing so far. Yeah, but then he goes and he, stir he just has to be a messy hoe and has to have his fill of drama. 
That's true. Because it was getting FOMO, he said. Yeah, and it's just like, eh, do you want FOMO? Do you want to satisfy your FOMO, or do you want to win? Dillion <clears throat> could really play a D slash former Aspen game and just float because I think he's mostly neutral. Nobody's really thinking about him, and I think Dillion can just lean into his strategy of planting seeds every now and then, which he did do. I did like, again, how he kind of held Fangai's feet to the fire of why did you do what you did. But then I also think in doing that he kind of fueled the target on him by Fangai. Even though Fangai alleges that he loves him. I'm like, no you don't. <laughs> the minute you're HOH you're putting Dilly on him. Shut the fuck up, Fangai. How about Fangai? Uh, I didn't like how he played the first couple episodes, so I guess with respect to that, he's up. Like, his baseline was negative, so he's now at a baseline, because he can kind of go under the radar a little bit. How about Mike, the HOH? Mike's doing his HOH. Mike's playing a good game. I'm not mad at it. How about Nick? Nick's down bad. <coughs> I mean, he is the nominee, but... How? Nick's down bad, but if Nick worked on his communication skills, he could really fuck their worlds up. He could, because Mike even said it. Mike was like, oh, if I confront him, he can just flip it back on us. Flip that hoe, Nick. Flip it like a pancake, okay? Really call out the alliance. He could. Light him up. And they're probably still gonna fucking put you in, but make enemies of your enemies. For real, for real. True. Nick's missing a little bit of cutthroat. Maybe we'll see him get it. How about Dazed? Dazed is doing fine. Just fine? He's up! Next. <laughs> Why? Why is Dazed up? Maybe Dazed is actually, you know, he's taking his Xanax. He's taking his Annie. Dazed is calm down. How about Nav? Nav, I would say, is mostly baseline, but slightly neutral because if he doesn't win the veto slash if one of uh, what's his ass's noms come down I don't see why it couldn't be Nav do you think so even though they have that like outside relationship none of these alliances are real <laughs> okay and lastly is Alex mm. I mean he's not on the block he has to be a little low Alex has potential to go back up though that's the excuse he wanted, though. I'm the I'm the forever pun. Well, then hold him true to his his reputation and put him up every time. You didn't you didn't really say if he's up or down, though. Um, I think his baseline has been so bad. <laughs> he's just still at baseline. Yeah, he does, of he, your fuck. Balance. He does have some work to do with his reputation from last season. Alex is just gonna have to fight it. Alex is gonna be me in my first season. He's just, after the merge. He's just gonna have to fight every week. He's either going to have to win or fight. 